Right, it looks like I am almost live, possibly live, who knows? Let me add a chat widget, if I can remember how to do that. But it appears that we are live. All right, good. Am I live? We'll say I'm live, screw it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Neville, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, slightly different. So first of all, you know that uh, if you've ever watched what I do before, that I am a private pilot student, a perennial private pilot student. Uh, the reason for that is that flight time is relatively expensive, and I have a family. So uh, the $10,000 that I need to finish up my PPL is just hard to find. So that doesn't mean, however, that I don't already know all of these procedures and how to plot a course and all that jazz. Uh, so today, we are going to fly this beautiful Carbon Cub, which I love. I guess it's not a Carbon Club, it's an X-Cub. Uh, um, cub Crafters, uh, either way, it's good stuff. Anyway, we're going to fly this airplane from uh, Burlington International, KBTV, uh, doing VOR to VOR, and we're going to land in Saranac Lake. It's going to be uh, something like a half hour or 40 minutes. It's not a super long flight. Uh, should be just enough time to get used to the process, uh, figuring out how to fly VOR to VOR. And uh, I'm going to hand fly this, I think. Uh, I might I might go uh, autopilot towards the middle, but I doubt it. This should be mostly hand flying because it's a cub. So I'm going to hit this ready to fly button, and now we are in the cub. There we go. Ah, <sighs> okay, uh, so the checklists in this game I have found, uh, they're awesome, but they're not complete yet. I'm not, I'm not super pleased with that, but such is life. So let's, this is, I have a widget, and it's in the way, and I need to move it. Uh, you need to be over here. There we go, cool. Alright, uh, so based on what I know, oh, you see how this, see how this brake is twitching? That's not happening in real life. The, the, the potentiometer in my uh, pedals is funky. So, there we go. I'll tap it. That should fix it, but we might run into some weird rudder issues, and if we do, that's the cause. All right, uh, so we are in... This is actually considered a complex airplane because it has a constant RPM prop. We're going to go ahead and get this thing ready to start. We're going to go ahead and push in the mixture all the way to full. We're going to go ahead and set the RPM to full. We're going to select a fuel tank. Um, so right now it is in the off tank. Now it is on the right tank. There we go. And going from left to right, which I believe is the flow in this one, we're going to turn on ignition, ignition, fuel pump. We probably don't need the pump, but we're going to throw it in there anyway. We're going to go ahead and turn on our beacon, which... Turn off standby strobe lights. On. St huh. Uh, anyway, uh, I believe that means that our beacon is on. We could go outside and check. Should we go outside and check? Let's go outside and check. External view is our... We don't have a beacon. Huh. Okay, well our beacon is not on then. Um, so I will go ahead and throw on our strobes then. That should... I should theoretically show people that we are... Oh, you know what? I haven't turned on the master yet. Um, turn that off. Boop. Master. Boop. So now we should be able to see if we have any lights on. So we still don't have a beacon, because we would see that. Let's go back into the cockpit. <coughs> we'll slap on the strobe. go. Strobes are on. So uh, you're supposed to turn on the beacon. I guess we'll go with this. Uh, to let people know that you're about to do some stuff, right? We are about to get our engine going. So we're going to go ahead and hold the brakes down. There you go. Uh, we're going to give ourselves just a little bit of throttle. Give it, uh, maybe call it 25% right around there. And then we're going to contact. And there you go, we have ignition. We want to bring this back to about a thousand RPM, so we're actually pretty close to where we want to be, and we're going to let this heat up 
while we look at our flight plan, which apparently is already programmed in. Very cool. All right. Uh, I was going to show you guys how to do VOR stuff, but apparently I don't need to. Um, cool, 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 cool. Okay, uh, then I won't program in the VOR, so we'll go ahead and close this. Uh, turn on scroll lock. Uh, oh, radio is off. That's right. We've started the engine, but we have not done all of the avionics. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the alternator. Turn off the fuel pump. Ignition stays on. That's good. Go ahead and turn on our avionics master. We don't need our nav lights. We don't need our landing lights. We're going to keep the stoves on. I feel good about this. We're going to pre-select our altitude. Now, if I can grab my kneeboard, it has my handy-dandy cheat sheet, because I will admit I always forget if I am going west, does that mean that I am even or odd? So let me grab this. West is VFR uh, even. So, oh, thousands plus 500. Even thousands plus 500, so we're going to fly at, uh, call it four and a half. So we'll go ahead and set uh, pre-select our altitude to 4,500. There we go. That looks good. Now we're going to, again, scroll lock. We're going to hit the ATIS, grab our weather. ATIS, come on. Burlington Airport information, Kilo 1600 Zulu. Wind 273. This should be louder, I think. Visibility, tree in heavy rain. I can't hear this. At 1,100 feet, oh well. clouds at 4, uh, wind 273 at 5, so basically no wind. Temperature 22. 2.10. Um, Altimeter 200. So we might have a problem with 4,500. We'll see. Landing and departing runway tree tree. VFR aircraft. Altimeter 2997. All aircraft read back hold short instruction. Uh, Advise controller on initial contact. You have somewhere in here. I had forgotten what the button is to set. Airport is information, Kilo one six zero zero Zulu. Wind two seven three at five. Back. Visibility tree in heavy rain. Sky condition few clouds okay. at one. We'll go to clearance delivery. Minimize that. And if I'm being honest, I've forgotten how to. Uh, full. There we go. Barrow two nine nine seven. 2997, there we go. And we can tell because Burlington International is around 320 feet. And if we check our chart, it says 335 feet. So, yes, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, it looks like we're going to... So we're going to take off. We're going to head down to the, um, the BTV VOR. That's 1175. So we can go ahead and make sure that that is in our... There we go, our NAV1 radio. How do I select my NAV1 radio? NAV1. I should figure this out before I take off, right? I think so. Uh, nav 1, I don't see an obvious nav control. CDI source should be VOR 1. Um, do 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 do. It's not there, not there, not there, not there, not there, not there. Bearing pointers, nav 1. I like that. I, um, menu. Oh, nav 1. There we go. Uh, so we're going to set nav 1 to, and again, I'm just pulling up the chart to check this. I had it, and if I was flying it for real, I would have this written down on a sheet of paper on my knee pad. 117.5. So, 117.5. Enter. Oh, 11 center, 117.5. I don't remember how I saw that. Nav 1, 11175. Switch that to... Interesting. 1175. Enter. One 
175. 175. Transfer to active. There we go. Okay. There we go. And we see the VOR switch backwards or to the side. That's cool. That means that we are able to see the VOR that we're going to use to navigate, which is what we want. So we'll go ahead and hit scroll lock to embiggen this. We're going to tune to ground. We don't really need clearance. Uh, we're going to depart to the south, actually. Burlington ground, Cup crafters, With November Kilo, Niners, taxi for takeoff, Niners, south Kilo, departure. That all looks good. They're going to come back to Oakley Doakley. Uh, 1183 when ready. We're going to take off on 3 3 via Delta. We'll throw to 1. Uh, Delta Alpha. Cool. Act that. So again, it's taxiway Delta. Um, runway 1, Delta Alpha. And so, boop. If we do. There we go. So right now. This is taxiway, I believe, Charlie. So let's go ahead and start our taxi. Pull those brakes off, because like I said earlier, they tend to stick. Not in real life, just in game. Oh, you know what? I bet even more likely in this is that the parking brake is stuck. And back up. There we go. Give it a little bit of throttle. This thing. There we go. We are rolling. Rolling quite quickly. Too much throttle. Alright. And so this is, I believe, Taxiway Charlie. Here. You're going to have to wait, car. Uh, so we're going to go down that way, and then we're going to cross runway one. And someone is calling me. I'm going to go ahead and mute while I taxi.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. Sorry about that. I um, I have a five-year-old daughter who decided earlier today that what she really wanted to do was destroy one of my sinks. So I fixed a bunch of pieces, and uh, and something that I didn't expect to happen happened. So I called a plumber, and that was the return call. So I'm going to go ahead and stop short of runway one right here, and we're going to go ahead and uh, extend this. Uh, ATC. What? Uh, request taxi for takeoff options. Departing west. Oh, they were talking to me and I didn't hear them. The audio is very quiet in this and I don't know why. It's it's quieter than it should be. Uh, I will have to work on that. Cubcrafters, runway 33 via D, cross 1, contact tower on 118.3. Okay, so they want me to cross 1. It's weird that they didn't tell me to hold short since... Legally, we are required to do that. Uh, hold short. Act that. Taxi to and hold short runway three three via taxiway delta cross runway one delta alpha. Taxi and hold short runway three three via one. Oh, I don't want ground services. Go back to clearance. Taxiway D crossway one D A. Where is the other traffic? We're going to switch to an external view real quick. I don't think there's other traffic. But I guess I guess ATC would know best, right? Uh, maybe while I'm waiting, I'll see if I can figure out why I can't hear them. Uh, objective. Taxi towards destination. I, I am. Taxi to and hold short. Hold position. Caution of the traffic. Maybe if I just move forward a little bit and then stop here, they'll think that I'm holding short. Oh, uh, tuned tower. No. There's no other traffic. I don't want to be a jerk and just cross. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe this is a bug? Because, like, there's no other traffic. Hold position, caution other traffic. I guess I'm just going to cross. And I'm going to wait for them to complain and say that I have done something wrong. We are now crossing runway one. Oh, there's the other traffic. Okay. Um, but that's... They just took off... Not on runway 33. Three. Uh, okay. Cool. And we'll just taxi on down. Hello, Heritage. That's what this joint is over there. That's Heritage Flight. Oh, and again, tail dragger means lots of notes. So oh, someone's saying something. Continue ta taxi. Acknowledge. Continue taxi. Roger, Cup Crafters and Niner. We're Victor. Come down here. That really slowed us down. Like, a lot, a lot. So I really like this system. I will f I will like it better. Like, it can be cleaned up a little bit. Um, but the ATC, in general, is, is pretty good. Um, Neum. Someone's... Oh. Who is that? Is that online tech guy? I can't actually see. Um... I'm gonna have to fix that. See, it's it's all of the all of the things that you don't get to test. It is OTG. Hello, OTG. Uh, stupid brakes are sticking. So now I'm gonna tune to tower on 1183. We're gonna go ahead and stop uh, right at the threshold of 33. Hello, 
Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and request takeoff clearance for VFR departure to the... I don't Six want west departure, I want south departure. Oh well. West is fine too. I can still make it work. Alpha approved. Alpha departure to the west approved. Hello! Ah, I need to fix the, the audio thing. I can act that, then we'll go ahead and take off. We're going to do a, uh, a no... No flap takeoff, because this is a cub. Flaps are silly on a cub for a takeoff. We'll make this a little bit smaller if we can. Where are we headed? So, uh, there is a an airport not far from Burlington called um, SLK. It is for uh, very wealthy people that want to go to... Throttle up gently... Uh, that want to hang out in, uh, in Adirondack. Uh, near, uh, oh, there we go. Throttle is good. 55 knots. We're going to go ahead and rotate here. Boop. And we're up. We're up, 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 up. And we're going to keep an eye on those RPMs because they are awfully high. There we go. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, it's SLK. It's Adirondack Regional. And so we are going to climb here up until we hit about uh, 700 feet. And then we are going to, at that point, uh, turn westerly, a bit more westerly. Uh, actually, we're going to climb straight ahead. There we go. Continue for west departure. Waiting for that. Um, I'll contact you next when you leave my airspace. Act that. And Burlington Tower Cup Crafters, we'll turn November westerly. And really, what I wanted departure. was a southerly departure, um, but such is life. There we go. We are headed west out over Lake Champlain, and we can make this a little smaller, I think. Maybe just like that. Oh, and we'll just gently climb out. What do they think I should look at? Uh, that is. The mall. They want me to look at the mall. Makes sense. My house is down over here. Where? Up here on this giant crescent looking thing. It's almost like it's a crescent shaped beach. Surprise. Uh, turn on the lights I forgot to turn on. Uh, AI taking your runways, right? Jerks. Uh, let's see. Oh, I am climbing like a bat out of hell. Well, that's fine. Uh, I figured we would fly at something like 5,500 feet, or I think 4,500 is what I've got pre-selected. Yep, yeah, right there. Uh, and now we are going to Alpha go ahead and get on that VOR. So to do that, we're going to fly something like that southwest. Uh, you are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. There we go. We'll change frequency, and we no longer have to talk to them. Which means we can get rid of the radio for a little bit. There we go. So, oops. So now what we need to do is set our VOR to be pointed the right direction. So what we're going to do uh, is we are going to turn this. Should do it, but it's not going to. Of course, there we go. Oh, not the barrow. That should be 299. There we go. Of course. So we want to come out of this thing on the something like the 250 radial to get where we're headed. So there we go. When this center line crosses to here, that will mean that we are on the radi radial from the VOR, and then we can just fly ourselves at like 255. Uh, boop. As we climb out over, this is Shelburne over here. And I can see my house from here, kind of. It's back over there. I can see the house next to mine from here. How's that? And we're just going to climb and climb and climb and climb, and we're going to watch this green line. Turn on the young yaw damper, even though we don't need it. And since we are in the air, we're actually going to pull the radio up. We're going to... Uh, you know what? I should have... Uh, so I've got my paper chart in front of me, which is like what we use to fly in the real world. So I'm going to do this and look outside the airplane uh, for just a little bit while I get my correct paperwork. We're going to tune the radio to the right source by using my paper chart. How archaic. 
Uh, so there is Plattsburgh. ASOS is 132225. So 132225. We're going to go ahead and hit this. Well, and we're not quite on the green line yet. We're going to zoom in. Ah. Oh, have you flown over your place to see what graphics they have? I have. Uh, more importantly, actually, I uh, was not flying over my place. Uh, that impressed me a little bit, but it's Burlington, so I figured that would be okay. Uh, what really impressed me was when I flew over uh, my old house in the Northeast Kingdom last night. Um, that was incredible. Uh, the flight in general around the neck last night was, was awesome. Uh, airspeed is still climbing. That's good. Uh, and what did I say the frequency I needed was? One... 132225. So select this. 132225. Uh, transfer. There we go. That's the active. And now I can hide this and go back to full screen. No, menu. Back. There we go. And so having put this here. No, that's not BTV. That's not what it should be saying. Does it not know what to do when I set a frequency manually? Weird. Near airport. Further from me. Maybe. So one of the things that I found is that some of the information that they have uh, is maybe not completely up to date. Uh, 132. Yeah, so they don't actually have the correct frequency for, for Plattsburgh uh, ASOS. That's fine. Um, no, the thing that in, uh, that impressed me the most, uh, online tech guy, was when I flew over my house in the Northeast Kingdom, the old uh, house, uh, the, the old horse farm. Uh, that was incredible. Uh, there are a couple of things about this that really impressed me. And flying over my old house, and then being able to watch the, the sky turn gold uh, as the sun set or filtered through the clouds. 2997, that's what I was looking for. Um, that was just incredible. Um, that is, out of all of the things that I've done, the most impressive. No, I don't want that. Uh, Barrow is set to 2997. There we go. Boop, boop. Back to full screen. And now we are... Actually, what's our altitude? We are oh, right at altitude, actually. So we're going to trim this out for straight and level flight. Something like that. Do -do 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 -do. Push buttons over and over. Of course, if I was cheating, I would just use the, uh, the autopilot to do this part and hold this level. Uh, and instead, I am pushing buttons to do it. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, I have two viewers. Hello, other viewer. I don't know who you are. But we are flying uh, almost straight and level. Get just a little bit closer on that. Ah, yeah, no, that's that's level. Cool. All right, and now let's look outside. This is Plattsburgh, I believe. Plattsburgh, New York. Um, actually, that. Yeah, so this is Valcor Island. Ah, uh, nice. Going to do similar eventually. Yes. So. Uh, multiplayer is built into this, and I know that you will never love airplanes as much as I do, but uh, it is probably not a terrible idea for you to get better hardware, um, even just a yoke, um, so that you can fly, uh, if, if you are at all actually interested in the phenomenon of powered human flight, um, then just a yoke, or I have a, a joystick I can lend you, um, a, a joystick and a throttle just to give you something so that you're not doing keyboard and mouse crap. Uh, and I can even show you how to use that stuff. So and we can do uh, formation flights, which are, I think, interesting. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of, uh, of engine tuning here. Now, oh, there's, they're letting me know that I am over. You should pick one up. Uh, let me just, here, I'll hit level. And, oh, see, here we go. So I had mentioned before... Uh, that we were going to, this green line was going to cross, and it has. So now we're going to go ahead, and I don't like that it keeps doing that. Oh, we're in the clouds. We're in the clouds. We're breaking laws. We're breaking laws. Um, yeah, we can just hit nav mode, and it'll follow the... Uh, no, I don't want... There we go. VOR1. 
So now it's going to follow this green line. And as long as we don't hit any uh, mountains over here, we're good. Live weather on. Yes, yes, live weather is on. Um, I'm still getting used to this FMS, which is what this system is called. Um, I don't, I don't love it in general. It's not a bad FMS, but it's not a great FMS. There we go. Nav mode back in, um, because it keeps trying to split the screen on me, and I don't want it to. Um, now it's going to overcorrect. Is it going to fix? Yeah. Okay. It's going to roll level. There we go. Ah. <sighs> Let's see what it thinks we should be looking at. I mean, these are very pretty mountains. So this is upstate New York. Uh, Plattsburgh, like I said, is down over here. And so Crown Point is back under under that wing. There we go. Crown Point is over... I think this is technically Crown Point right there. And Shelburne is back over here. And it's really struggling to find this uh, this VOR. So, uh, anyway, uh, online tech guy, like I said, if you are at all interested, I have a spare uh, joystick and throttle that I don't use. It's really for combat flight simulation as opposed to the setup that I've got for this stuff, which is uh, like civilian grade general aviation aircraft. That's actually what this is called, this GA. Um, and I've got, uh, I'd be glad to lend it to you if you want to try to get in on this so that we can do some flight stuff because this is awesome. I love doing this. Um, I think you know that by now. You try it out. Perfect. I will, uh, I will bring it by uh, sometime. Uh, for the other viewers, I happen to know OTG in the real world. Uh, we've met. So, <laughs> uh, well, we are... It's, it's letting me know again that I am... Oh, I'm descending. I thought I told you to... Us. I did not tell you to actually hold my altitude. So we'll go ahead and hit altitude mode. And it's going to hold us at 4300. I had planned for 4500, but I'm inside that, that window, so we'll be fine. <laughs> Once or twice. That's right. We've met. Um, so I don't know who else is here. I don't know who can see me. Um, I've got more than one viewer. Or I had more than one viewer. Um, I have all of the hardware to do this because I fly in real life too. So I've got my kneeboard all set up uh, now and for the next flight I'll actually pre-populate it with stuff. Uh, but the next thing that we need to do is actually set our uh, NAV2 pointer. And so we're doing what's called a VOR to VOR flight. I'll open up our, what is it, V for map? <laughs> Boop. Where, where's my VFR map? Uh, I think, ah, uh, that's a pisser. So our VFR map is uh, off the screen because I have a double wide screen. Yes, the slide rule. I actually have that out. I was using it. Um, the slide rule is my favorite part. I have, I literally have two of them. One of them is a whiz wheel. The other one is uh, what they give to most pilots. I will lend you one of those, too, because it's so much fun. Um, <laughs> so we can't... Maybe maybe I can do it in this. Maybe I can do it in here. Menu, map. So on the map, we're going to zoom out real quick. And I am doing what's called VOR to VOR navigation. And so in here on the map, over... Uh, not there, not LKP. Slide rule versus iPhone. Uh, I actually prefer the slide rule. 100% prefer the I slide rule, actually. Ah, crap. The map. I want you to just show me the map and then stay on the map. Uh, oh. It's... Uh, so, because the game streams this stuff live... It doesn't necessarily have all of the stuff that I want. Oh, here we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this VOR, which it doesn't even have on the map. You know what? I'm just going to look it up. This, this kind of makes me sad. Um, so I'm flying on this path. 
Uh, there's no USB ports in the cockpit. Uh, in in new cockpits, there usually are actually to power things, um, and you can just add them in. <sighs> so what I need is, and I'm looking this up on my charts. 109.2 is the frequency for the VOR that we're headed to, and so what we're gonna do is hit menu. And then we're going to go to nav2 frequency, and we're going to set this to whatever it is I just said, which I have the memory of a newt. So I'm going to look it back up. Uh, it is right here. Do -do -do -do. You should be able to hear the paper moving when I do this. Uh, 109.2, so 1092, transfer into VOR2. Yeah, well, see, you remembered it. I didn't. Uh, and so now, when I go back to here, hit enter, and then menu, VOR2 is there. So what I want to do is add here a bearing for VOR2, which is this blue one. So now, we're going to do... Haha! <laughs> so now we are going to use the autopilot to fly directly to VOR2, which will bring us to the other airport. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to hit this course knob. Nope. I accidentally turned the barometer knob. Uh, course. Nope, that's Barrow. Course. There we go. It's doing course one? Really? How do I have it do course two? This is actually quite hard to do. There we go. So we're going to point it right at it, and now it's going to fly us directly to the VOR that we want. Um, if I had done a bit more planning, uh, then it would have done this to begin with. Um, but I didn't, so it didn't. Uh, I was expecting this to be a VOR flight. And what are you doing? You say you're flying nav, but I don't like how you're doing it. So I'm about to disconnect this autopilot and just do it by hand. It's going to be stupid. Now, so uh, part of the issue is that this is a silly um, FMS. I don't, I don't love this. Uh, FMS is a flight management system, uh, and this one is just kind of a turd. Um, I don't love it. So we are going to fly. There we go. So now it's decided it wants to. Now it thinks it's on the line, and it's going to fly uh, basically from where we are on a straight line to what's called the VOR that's right next to this airport. And so it's just going to fly us there. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to undo this. Can I customize the aircraft with a different FMS? Uh, I cannot. Um, this, uh, in the real world, you could. Uh, but in this game, I'm going to be stuck with this FMS forever. So I have to get used to how it works. And I don't love it, so I might just not fly the X-Cub as much. Uh, the other airplane, which I adore, is that Zlin that you and I had discussed previously. Uh, the Zlin is awesome, and I love it. The problem with the Zlin is that it doesn't have a full uh, flight instrument package. It just has the instruments that you need for VOR flight. Or excuse me, not VOR, VFR. And so it doesn't allow us to go VOR to VOR it doesn't have the radio. So, oh, yes, you crashed it good. You crashed it good. Oh, I crashed it good. Yes, yes, you did. I remember you running it into the, the uh, what do you call that thing, the building. So, it is super pretty, though. I, uh, I don't have quite as powerful of a system as you have, OTG. But it is powerful enough. At the end of the stream yesterday, yes, I did watch it. Uh, this is just... It's pretty. I like it. Um, but anyway, the Zlin, I like, I like the way it flies better. I like the way it handles. I like the instrument package that it has. Um, and they do actually make um, a tiny little instrument that would slot into the cockpit of it that would give me what I'm looking for. And I think they should add it. Uh, if, if someone were to do a refresh pack or a, um, like a commercial package of the Zlin but with better instrumentation, I would 100% buy it. Hands down. No, no questions asked. 
um, in a heartbeat. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of engine management here just because we can, um, just to explain sort of how this process works. So uh, this airplane has a turbocharged engine and it has a... Oh, it's a little bumpy because we're going over the top of a mountain. So that's cool. It has real turbulence. Um, so because the air is bumpy, we want to get as close to the yellow as possible without actually hitting it. Let's see. It says... Uh, 87 knots is our utility capacity. That means that at 87 miles per hour... Oh, this is miles per hour. And this is knots. Interesting. Can I... Can I fix that? I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. That's crazy pants. That's amazing. This airplane doesn't match itself. Holy crap, slide rule, that's exactly right. So I'm going to pull out my slide rule uh, right here, and I see statue and nautical, so uh, we are doing 105 nautical miles an hour, so I'll throw that in here, uh, just like that, and it says that we are going a statute 121 miles per hour. So uh, we are well above these, which is fine. I'm going to want to not... So what I'm doing right now is technically called scud rutting. Uh, and I'm, I'm sort of dodging underneath the clouds to miss uh, mountains. It's kind of dangerous in the, in the real world. It's, it's frowned upon. Um, and flying through clouds like this is actually where you get uh, ice buildup. But we shouldn't have to worry about that today. It is warm enough and I am low enough that it's probably okay. Um, but I will need to watch out for these mountain tops. Um, Actually, let me pull out my handy-dandy uh, chart, since I know where I am, and see what the required altitude is. Uh, there we go. So to get over this junk, they think I should go 5,700 feet. Uh, the top of the mountains are 4,872 on Whiteface. That's this one. 4,872 feet. And you'll notice... It's higher than us because we're 4,300. So we are actually going to climb a little bit. We're going to set our vertical speed to boop, boop, boop. And we're just going to gently climb. Boop. And we're going to gently climb and gently climb. Um, so on the charts, they have big numbers in blue that are your sort of minimum safe altitude. And the sector that we are flying through, like I said, it's 5,700 feet. Um, but we're not going to go that high. We don't, we don't need to. We can actually see all of the mountains. And I can't see a peak on the chart that is higher than... Well, I guess Mount Marcy is 5,344. Uh, Whiteface is up here. So this is Whiteface. Full throttle. Pull back all the way. Gently climb. Yes. That is not my MO. Um, we're just going to do this the Nabil way, which is the, the way of the guy who's hoping to have his PPL someday. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll do this a little bit differently. Instead of climbing over it, maybe we'll fly through these valleys. That might be more fun. I mean, as long as we end up where we're going, and it would be pretty hard not to. Uh, let's see if I can identify where I am. So this road and river... Uh, there's probably... If, I, if we are where I think we are then there should be... I think this is Lake Placid. Safe and recommended way. Yes. Uh, let's turn off the autopilot. We'll do a little bit of navigation. So I know that's Whiteface, right? So I am basically due south of Whiteface, which means Lake Placid will be right over here. There we go. That's Lake Placid. And I can see the big-ass island in the middle of Lake Placid, which means I know exactly where I am and how to get where I'm going. So we're going to descend, and we're going to do this by following ground contours, which means I'm going to chop throttle all the way back, and we are going to descend through the clouds. And I can see the ground, so it's not super dangerous, even though it feels it. And there we go. We are descending through the clouds. Zoom, zoom, and we're going to do this in the, perhaps, external view? Boop. Boop. In 
the drone view. So even though it looks dangerous, there isn't any real danger right now because I have an idea of how much I can descend. So there you go, Lake Placid, which means if we follow the road right over here, that'll bring us to the airport we want to go to. God damn, they made this beautiful. Look, a rainbow. An actual, honest-to-fuck rainbow. That's amazing. That's highly amazing. Alright. Close this. Boop. And... I don't think we're in airspace. Impressive. Yeah, isn't it? Beautiful. There we go. This is... I don't think we're in airspace. Let's call the tower. Uh, K. Plattsburgh. No, I don't want Plattsburgh. Lake Placid. Yeah, so we'll tune into traffic real quick. No, I'm not going to land here. No, I didn't want ASOS. I want Lake Placid. Traffic. Oh, their traffic is someone else's ASOS. Or AS, yeah, ASOS is automated. AWOS, Automated Weather Observation System, and ASOS is Automated Surface Observation System. So the difference being that a weather observation system is an automated uh, thing that just sort of tells you what the weather is like, whereas an ASOS will tell you what the weather is like and the ground is like. So an ASOS requires uh, usually human interaction of some kind. So, and then I don't know where we are headed, so we're going to select... Uh, further from me, not Plattsburgh, not Tycho. I must have skipped it accidentally, because we're, we're closer than that. Oh, there we go, SLK. This is where we're headed. Automated weather, sky is falling, ground is wet, that's right. Uh, and we are getting close to the ground, which is intentional, uh, but I want to stay legal here. So we need to be at least 500 feet from anything. And I give it a little bit more throttle. So we're going to keep our manifold pressure right around here. The RPMs we want to keep right around 24 and 24. There we go, that looks fine. And that should give us uh, eyeball, eyeball crushing speed. Alright, visibility 3 and heavy rain. Oh, this is going to be awesome. A few clouds at 1100. <laughs> you can see we're flying into this heavy rain. Um, and, oh, I missed I missed the uh, the barrow setting. That's okay. I'll hear it this next time. Yeah, that, that live radio chatter. Uh, it would be live radio chatter. There's no one else there right now. But yeah, this is the, the ASOS. We're not on the traffic frequency yet. It's like actual radio chatter. For the yeah, like you could tune your radio in to get these this information from any nearby airport. Uh, the airport next to your house has a. Um, an A W O S. Uh, visibility three. I really would like to see two three eight at nine. A few clouds at eleven hundred feet. A few clouds at three two hundred feet. A few clouds at twelve thousand three hundred feet. Oh, it keeps dis. Ah, I keep losing it. Keep losing it. Sky condition. Few at 1, 100, few at 1, oh, let's see. What's the deal right now? Like actual radio feed? Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't. It doesn't pull the ones from. Uh, like it doesn't stream the real life audio one. Uh, what it streams instead is um, all of the real life audio ones also have a component that they post online. And it takes that component online, reads it, sends it to Azure, which converts it to audio. And then that's what gets played in the game. Uh, so the weather is is actually generated from the real uh, AWOS and ASOS stations at these airports in real life, uh, but it's not it's not streaming those to us in real time. Even though that would be awesome. Uh, the reason for that actually it kind of makes sense if you think about it. 
So it is actually radio data. It is. Uh, so the, the reason that uh, they don't stream it live is that they also don't actually stream real weather live. They generate it based on what all of these things are saying is going on, but it's not live weather, right? Uh, so when this airport that we're flying to reports that the weather is whatever, um, they take that and generate the nearby weather from it. Uh, actually, since we are creeping up awfully close to the, uh, the smooth air speed, which is what the yellow is, uh, you don't want turbulence or bumps or anything when you're in the yellow, uh, or it'll tear your wings off and you'll die. Uh, so I'm going to throttle back a little bit because I don't want that to happen, especially as I approach this airport. Uh, we're going to go to KSLK traffic, and what do I have for runways? Runway Street 3, if I remember the weather, is probably the best way to go. We're going to go full stop, and we're going to announce our position. And it's going to say that we are 6 miles southeast, 2,200 feet inbound to land, runway 23. And you should be able to see the airport right around there, I believe. I should actually probably climb out of here. Oh, it must be loading a chunk, because everything paused. There we go. Um, altimeter 2998. Cool, I finally got it. 2998. Go away. I need my barrow. 29... 2998. There we go. That confirms that we have a real altitude setting so that we don't crash into the ground when we think that the uh, the runway is at an altitude and we think we are near that altitude. Which, by the way, if I look at the chart, SLK is 1,663 feet, and so at 2,140 feet, we are actually way too low. Uh, we should be about 500 feet higher uh, to initiate any kind of landing uh, to join the pattern. So we want to be a thousand feet uh, above where the runway is when we join the pattern. So we're going to go ahead and climb to 2,600 feet or so. And to do that, I'm basically just going to crank everything all the way up. And you should be able to hear the RPMs go up. I don't love flying through haze, but such is life. Uh, and we're actually going to set the heading indicator. We know the runway is 2-3. So we're going to set the heading to 2-3. And so if the runway goes this way, then we're going to bisect the thing. Full throttle, pull the stick. That's sort of what I did. Uh, and now I should be... This is sort of cheating. I'm going to announce position. I should be like two miles Kilo away. Three miles away. Three miles south. Uh, three miles south. Uh, three miles south. Uh, I don't three miles see. Oh, oh there it is. So now we are going to announce that we are on the downwind leg for runway two, three. Uh, we're not quite on the downwind leg. We're going to join... It's not going to be a picture-perfect 45-degree entry, but it shouldn't be too bad. We're going to throttle down, and we're going to say that we are entering our downwind leg. Kilo Sierra Lima, Kilo Traffic, Cub Crafters, November 9er, 6 9 or 8 Victor is yep, on downwind runway down. way down. <sighs> so the downwind leg is just like this. You see we're flying parallel-ish to the runway. We want to actually be parallel, not just ish. There we go. Parallel to runway 23, and as you can see, it's pointed at the bottom, which means that we are pointed the opposite direction, i.e. downwind. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to trim this out to fly level. There we go. That's about level at 95 knots and we are a beam the end of the runway just about not quite there we go and a beam the end of the runway so we are once we get past this a little bit no fancy boxes that's right well that's because i sort of know what i'm doing uh now we're going to turn base and announce that boop 
Kilo Sierra Lima uh, Kilo base, and we're gonna lower the throttle a little bit more. Is on base runway two tree. Uh, we've announced base. And then we're going to be in the position to go final in just a minute. Uh, we are a little low and a little fast, I think. Announce final. Kilo Sierra Lima Kilo Traffic Cup Crafters so November on final. Victor is on oh, final. Oh, this has lights. I didn't see the lights. Oh, we use those. And we're gonna throttle down a little bit. So right now we have no flaps down, which I don't love. Oh, there's the middle marker. There we go. And I really should be on the rudders more than I am because this is a tail dragger and we're going to roll this out. Here we go. We're still, still no flaps, uh, which means we're going faster than we should be. So we're just going to chop throttle and we're going to hold it off the ground and there's the first notch of flaps. This should have been up while we were on the downwind leg, but I just didn't get it slow enough. And there's the second notch of flaps, and lots and lots of trim. There we go. Not beautiful, but we didn't die. That works for me. Uh, and so now we should be able to do none of this stuff. Get up in the glass. And we're going to turn off as soon as we can. Um, I think that's a turn off right here. Boop. And we'll go ahead and rudder left. Safe landing, that's right. This is how I do. This is how I do, OTG. Alright, and we will announce clear of the runway once we pass that yellow line. Kilo and we're gonna go ahead Kilo and taxi back to parking. Is clear of the runway. Straight. And then parking is back over there. We're actually going to have to cross another runway, um, but I don't think anyone will be using it. But we'll know in a second. Doop de doop. And maybe, oh, I'm going a little fast. We'll do external view for the taxiing bits. I feel like I'm going really fast. I am, since I have to stop here. Technically, so in all airports in America, it is now federal law. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's a little fast. It is federal law to stop at this bar, uh, which is announces the that you are in a runway, and even in an unmanaged airport like this, we have to uh, we have to check and make sure there's no traffic. And since this is an online game, that does make sense. Uh, and I'll even pull up the radio just to hear if there's anyone else announcing that they're doing stuff. And it doesn't look like anyone is. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this in. We are not taking off. We are still taxiing. Kilo Sierra Lima Kilo traffic. I am Crafters sure November that it has announced the wrong thing, but that's okay. Uh, we are going to... There we go. Taxi over to this fuel truck. And stop. There we go. So now we've got it at idle. I'm going to go ahead and head inside. We'll shut this thing down. We'll shut it down properly-ish. Uh, there we go. So... We will turn off the landing lights, and we'll turn off the strobe, or actually the navs. We'll leave the strobes on. Standby. I don't even know what this button does. I'm not used to having standby strobes. It's silly. Uh, all right, and now we are going to pull the mixture. Actually, we're going to turn off the avionics. Pull the mixture all the way back. That'll kill the engine pull the RPMs down, and then turn off everything. Boop! And she is off. Alright, uh, oh, one last thing. We have to set our fuel to off, which I think is that, and then the parking brake, which is down here, and I hate. Boop! There we go. Parking brake is set. 
And then external view, which I need uh, an easy way to do this, I think. All right. So uh, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as always, it's been a pleasure. Uh, our next flight will be out of this airport to uh, somewhere else. I haven't decided where yet, and I haven't decided what we'll be flying yet. So uh, anyway, have a good day, and I will catch you guys.